we'll just have to try to understand certain web-based attacks which are uh, most uh, seen in uh, most popular uh, many of the websites nowadays which have been uh, used based on the uh, severity of the vulnerabilities it's been rated into top 10 kind of a thing and by OWASP. so we'll try to understand all of these concepts uh, in a duration of one hour so to start with uh, why web applications yes as we all know all of us uh, belonging to various organizations we are trying to host our websites and our uh, web-based solutions on the internet so that people can benefit out of it so when we are making all of this on public to for the people to benefit on to uh, we are trying to uh, give so many services at the same time we are also uh, being uh, made available to the hackers all of these websites wherein they try to intrude and in case there is some vulnerability uh, they can easily uh, come into the systems so we will try to understand how, how the attackers can reach our systems what kind of vulnerabilities can affect them and uh, so on so as you see like this uh, i'll try to introduce you to the web various uh, uh, concepts i'll just try to name you so that it is something interesting to the uh, uh, more on to web security you may think try to understand those concepts uh, on yourself at the later point of time then we'll understand how the information gets leaked out and how people misuse this information which has been leaked out at various instances in various websites and finally we'll have an overview on to OWASP top 10. So with this agenda in plan, uh, I'll quickly take you through the uh, applications. So as uh, there are some introductions, I won't put much time here. So as you all know, web, where it is, we are all securing ourselves at home using various security mechanisms. We have antivirus and all. And at organizations, we maintain a lot of security by using firewalls, intrusion detection systems, demilitarized zones we maintain wherein people, we protect our systems. Though all of these security are in place, still there are so many hacks that have been happening and every one on the other day we see that so many, uh, so much of data has been laid out, some website has been defaced and kind of things. So let us see like uh, what, why this is happening. So as you can see this picture, uh, the right side circles uh, which have been placed out, we are trying to represent this with the demilitarized zone. So we host these other servers where in our organization we put uh, in a demilitarized zone that is in a secure environment where we have a lot of perimeter defenses like an uh, intrusion detection system, firewall and so on. Now in the left uh, box what you see here are the clients with the public who access our websites and all of this access happens through the internet. Now when this kind of an access has been happening across over the internet, there are so many people who watch the communications and who try to understand whatever information is available on this internet about these websites or the other way about the clients also, people try to attack them. Now, we being from the organizations, we will try to protect ourselves and from the organization's perspective. So our uh, objective is to understand on how these attackers are coming to these demilitarized zone, which are nothing but these uh, orange circles and how the attacks are happening on the uh, websites. So uh, generally, when we host any website, what uh, there are some thumb rules that many of us try to consider, uh, wherein uh, we run our websites on port 80. Uh, that's the default port. That's the reason when you type in google.com, yahoo.com, facebook.com, we don't type any port type, right? Because by default, it is run, it has been using port number 80. And uh, we consider that if I put up a HTTPS, it makes my website secure. And so we try to ensure using HTTPS. And we have firewalls, we have IDS, and so we are all safe. These are the basic thumb rules that most of us try to proceed, I mean, consider before going for any kind of a public hosting. However, the single port which we are making it open, 80 or 443, sometimes both also, because we, we try to ensure people come on 80, still we allow them to go to automatically to 443. That is nothing but the HTTPS. So to the single pathway itself, there are so many attacks, as you can see in the, the brown box in the top, web-based attacks like SQL injection, parameter tampering, cross-site scripting, uh, attacks like uh, privilege escalation, denial of service. There are many more which are still possible on uh, the applications or the service that has been running on port 80. Though we have firewall, what firewall can do? 
as uh, you all know, it will block other ports apart from what we are allowing. So what we are allowing from an organization's perspective is A0. So the rest of the attacks which come, which may target on other ports are being blocked by firewall well enough. But what about the web-based attacks? The firewall allows because for it, anything that comes on AT is genuine. Uh, then we try to put a lot of IDS IPS solutions, which also try to protect these contents to an extent. However, there are many cases they were in these FAFs and all are also being bypassed and still attack goes from the public domain through our firewall to our uh, applications environment. And thus the attacks reach our application level issues, service level issues, and then operating system level issues, right? So a single attack that can happen on port 80 can affect not only our application, it can also reach to our web server. From there, it can also go to the operating system and in turn, it can affect the database. So this is the single entry is sufficient enough to create harm to any of these uh, things which are there in our, within our organization's demilitarized zone. So now let us just have understanding on what's happening in this uh, scenarios. To start with, as a basic information, I'll try to explain you on when we access a particular website. As you see in the left side, this is a browser. When I type something on my browser, there's a request that's going to the server and server responds back. When a request goes and response comes in, uh, as an end user, for us, uh, we wait for a few seconds and the website gets loaded on the browser, right? But in those few seconds, there is so much of data that has been exchanged between the client and the server. And that is one entry, or uh, I should say one source for attackers to actually understand what kind of information is getting leaked over there. Generally, if you see any kind of a request or response contain lot of data, I won't go into uh, these uh, so much of internals, uh, just uh, for give you a glimpse on, this is called as a request and response. That is when I'm saying a request is going from browser to the server, server gives a response that is called as a response. When these two are exchanged, these are so much of data that flows across the systems. So before I go to my slide, I will just take you to my uh, one of the application. Uh, let's name any of the application of your uh, Maybe, which one did I use? Uh, okay, I'll use uh, infosecawareness.in itself. So when I type in infosecawareness.in, so in fraction of seconds, it would just try to uh, connect to the server and load the page, right? Okay. Yeah, I have tried to access another site, which is icrpmu.in. Now, when we type in any particular any given website, in fraction of minutes, like even if you go for facebook.com, the browser just loads and in some seconds or minutes, we just see a website being loaded. And then we type in some credential over here and we try to log in. Now in this duration, there is some information that has been communicated that's called as a request and response. Now how you can see as a layman is, if you are using a Firefox browser or a Chrome browser, you would have a plugin already been available in your system. To enable that, you need to just press the function key F12. Now I'm pressing my function key F12. And so you can see that there is a, a small window that has been popped up in the browser. Now, when this window is popped up, generally for you, if you open up, you'll see this window for the first. In the top, I hope you can see my uh, mouse pointers. I'm showing you some tabs. There's an inspector tab, there is a console tab, debugger and network point of view for us a uh, interesting point is the network tab so just click on the network tab and then try to refresh your page so when i refresh my page the moment the page is getting loaded i see some uh, requests being loaded on the in this particular plugin as you see here this is a get method then there is a post method being called out everything on the facebook.com domain now when this request is getting hit i click on any of them then I get a, another window over here in the right side where you can see headers, cookies, request, response. There are so many things. Just click on request. So there are some parameters associated with this. We can see them over here generally. However, I'm just expand, uh, moving this window a little up for your understanding. Now, what I was trying to explain to you is this part, the request and the response. The moment I type facebook.com, 
this is the request what you're seeing here this is the request header what you see the bottom so as part of the request header you can see that there is a lot of information that is going what kind of content my browser is accepting before that i'll just convert this to raw mode so that you can see i'm trying to fetch get slash nothing but the home directory of the host facebook.com so this is called as the the first line you can see here is called as a request header is this visible to everybody i am just expanding i hope this is visible so this first line is called as the request header followed by there are so many other headers going along with the request so when we type any domain every time our browser sends lot of communication to the server i'm sorry lot of data to the server so that data is thing but we call them to be the request headers and the request body so request header usually consists of a request header then followed by to which host i am trying to communicate and then it will try to give some information about the client like which version of the browser i am using what all uh, languages i am supporting accepting language us if it is a different the people use custom uh, online long languages also So at that time it would send different languages, H I I N H I like that. Then while my connection is live, some cookies being preset and some caching related data is going. This is about the client environment. Now the moment I type Facebook dot com, all of this information is going to the server. Now server is responding back again with the page. Now when the server responds back, what you see is a beautiful page like this on the home page. But along with that page, the server is also sending some information. that is called as the response header so in the response header you will have all of this information over here now the first end is called as the response header so this is the version http2 200 okay and then it is giving me some more headers these are all headers related to it can be security related it can be about some informations mostly what happens is from this header people try to get understanding about the version of the servers for example i go to my application where there is some uh, this is one of the sample application i have with me for this application if i try to see the same request response headers again i press my f12 key and i try to refresh my browser immediately you can see here i am trying to access the headers here again so the request header it's all talking about my browser and the response header i just shift to raw and you can see This is the two hundred okay, and these are the cookies, and it's giving me information that what time it request has been initiated and so on. Since this is from the cache, it did not fetch much information. I'll access another page. One second, I'm just checking my VM. Okay, I think my okay. Well, uh, I'm not getting my IP. Once I get the IP, I'll just come back to this uh, application again. So, meanwhile, uh, this is what we are trying to understand is about the request and the response of uh, any particular given site. We are trying to refer to Facebook.com or ICFMU. Wherein you can see information about the servers. So, uh, when we access any website, uh, when a request is going and the response comes back, we can try to get some information about the servers in this method, in this way. As you can see here. The website is trying to say that I won't disclose my server, but in few cases we would also get information which web server it is using and all those things, the cookies, the inset, and so on. So let's take uh, you, you can verify for any website. You can get information in this manner about the headers. Uh, so the glimpse of the same are been already put in this uh, slide also. So 
when the response is coming back generally there will be a lot of status codes 100 200 okay one second 100 200 and so on 